Hey Rosie, what we're going to do on this problem is I'm going to, I'm going to sketch this out for you and I'm also going to pull it up on Desmos so that you can see um, which areas or which volumes that we're, we're looking at um, getting here. So I've got two different equations here. So I got this, this first guy, we'll call this guy right here, number one. Okay, so I got the square root of the natural log of x over six. So let me go ahead and plug that in to a graphing program. Okay, so we've got y is equal to the square root of the natural log of x divided by six. Okay, so you can see <clears throat> what it looks like down here. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so we got this, this guy right here. And our other one is going to be, so we'll call this guy equation number two. So equation number two is the same thing, except these guys are both squared on the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we got this guy right here, right? Okay, then we also have the line y equals one, which is a horizontal line at a height of one. Okay, now. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. The area that I'm looking for, if I, um, if I pull this off the screen here, this guy, oops, come on. There it is, right? So the area that I'm looking for is the area bounded by those curves. And so it's going to be the area, let me use purple here. It's going to be this area right in here. Okay. So all of this through here, right? Okay. Now we're going to take that guy and we're going to wrap it around the axis, right? So we're going to end up with uh, basically this like this U-shaped thing on its side, but it's going to be hollowed out, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to find some intersection points, okay? So what we're going to do is, well, first, we know that these guys intersect at an x value of 6. The next point that's going to be important is where do these two guys intersect. And the reason for that is because when I work with the washer method, okay, I'm going to need to find the radius values, okay, right? So and you'll see that in just a second as I kind of walk through the explanation of the setup. But we need the radius values. And so what we need is the top line, which is the blue line, minus the red line here. The green line doesn't play any role from six to whatever this number is, and we'll find this number. Then, from here on over, the green line does play a role and the blue line doesn't. So it's gonna be the green line and the red line that we're gonna to have to look at, okay? So we're gonna also need to find this intersection down here. So I need to know that guy as well. So what I'm gonna do, by the way, uh, let's just go up here and mark these guys. Um, so, the blue line is this guy, I believe. Let's go back and check. So, yep, the blue line is that guy. And the red line is this guy. And of course, the green line is this little guy right here. Okay, so we've got those in there. So now what we want to find is we want to find the intersection of the blue and the green. So this is it's algebra, okay? We could use Desmos to, to get an approximation, but you don't want to do that, okay? You want to find an exact value. So the blue line, which is the square root of the natural log of x squared over 36, we want to know when is that equal to 1, right? We want to know when is this guy equal to this guy, 
that's this over here. So we'll square both sides, and that'll give us the natural log of x squared over 36 is well, still equal to 1. Okay. Now I'm going to use um, my log property here, and I'm going to say that this is log base e of x squared over 36 is equal to 1. So e to the first, which is just e, is equal to x squared over 36. Because remember, so this, guy is, this guy to this guy is equal to this guy. So this will be 36. Let me write that a little bit better there for you. This will be 36e is equal to x squared, which means that 6 square roots of e is equal to x. Now it's plus or minus here, but but that's not going to be an issue, okay, because we're dealing with the positive one here. So this guy right here is going to be 6 square roots of e. By the way, I just want to point out that that negative value that we got, it's still a solution over here as well, okay? But that's not the part of the graph that we're looking for. We're looking for this guy right here. Okay, so we've got it. Okay, now, what we also need to find is this intersection over here, and because we need our we need our bounds for our integration. Okay, so let's get this guy down here. Okay, well this guy, I'm gonna erase this up here, use a space. Okay, so this guy over here is gonna be equal to the red line intersect the green line. So when is the red line? equal to the green line. Again, we'll square both sides. Okay, we'll use our, our log rule. So e is equal to x over 6. So 6e is equal to x. Okay. Now we've got our bounds. Okay, that's what we wanted. Now, let's walk through the picture here, what's going on. Let's take a random or an arbitrary uh, cylinder here. So what we've got is if I if I take a small little cut here like this. Okay, I've got this little distance right here, and that's the piece that gets revolved around. So what I've got, this little piece right here. Okay, what I've got, let me see if I can draw it out for you here. Is this creates, that's not great, but you get the idea. I create a three-dimensional cylinder by wrapping this guy around, okay, like that. Now, the outer radius, the outer from the center out, that is given by the blue line. And so, if the hole had not been cut in here, so if we had taken the whole volume, instead of like even this right here, what we'd have is we'd want to add up, okay, the circumference value, okay, the circumference value is 2 times pi times the outer the outer radius okay the outer radius here is given by this blue equation excuse me not 2 pi pi r as in circumference so it's going to be pi times the radius squared which will be this this function here Okay, that guy, I can even write the squared outside just so that it maybe looks a little bit better. Squared, this guy, squared. And dx is, right, is our small little distance right here. Okay, so that gives us our area, our surface area, multiplied by the little bit of width gives us our volume. Okay, so that's what we have is we have the volume. And of course, our x values are gonna go from six 
to 6 square roots of e, like this. Okay. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to take this and we're going to subtract off. Because what I've calculated now is the volume of the whole thing. But now I need to subtract off the guy on the inside. So what's the guy on the inside? Well, it's 6. It's the same exact thing, except the radius is different. The radius is the smaller radius, which is the red guy. Like that. Okay? So, oops, this guy's squared. Okay, so what your book does is it just combines these, which is right. You can do that. Okay. So what we've got is pi times the integral of 6 to 6 square roots of e um, times the quantity square root of the natural log of x squared over 36 squared. I'm going to have to put an extra set of parentheses in here. I'll do them in a different color. That way it's clear. Minus the square root of the natural log of x over 6. That guy squared. Okay. Dx. So that'll give us the volume by rotating from here to here around the x-axis. Now you've got to go from here to here, still rotating around. So I'm not going to do that out for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the first volume and we're going to add it to the second volume rotated around. I think you should be able to follow that. Um, and that will give you using the disk and washer method. Okay, So your setup is is a little bit different for your um, for the shell method so I'm, but I'm gonna let you kinda work through that where this should be a good start for how to set up the uh, disk and washer method and if you need help uh, going on just let me know